Hey, so this is another video by Pet Rock, and today I'm working on my wife's 98 Ford Mustang. Today I'm gonna to be replacing the brake pads and rotor. So I'm not one of those people who replaces their rotor every single time they replace their brake pads. These rotors are actually the stock rotors that came with this vehicle. I've had them turned a couple times in order to uh, smooth them out, and they've done great. I've had no problems with, uh, with braking performance on, these, on this car. The only reason I'm replacing the rotors now is because I measured the thickness here and it is now beyond the minimum thickness. So they're due to be replaced. In order to replace the brake pads, you need to remove the caliper. To make your life a little bit easier, once you get it off, it's best to remove the parking brake cable. And the way you do that is you just pull it out, slide it over, and then down, and it'll unhook itself. Of course you need to have the parking brake off when you're doing this, otherwise you'll never get this brake cable off. Next you take out the emergency brake retaining C-clip. Just take a screwdriver in here and pry out. And then push the brake cable or pull the brake cable through. Next you remove the two bolts here and here that are 13 millimeter. You want to try to use a six-sided socket or box wrench when cracking these bolts. The reason being is that these are notorious for rusting and so you don't want to strip them when trying to remove them with, with a 12-point socket, for example. I find it best to crack both bolts first before completely removing them. That gives you the most amount of leverage in case these things do require a little bit of force. Once you got the two bolts out, you take a pry bar or a screwdriver and pry out the brake caliper. Make sure not to let this thing drop. You don't want it to hang off of the brake line, otherwise you could potentially damage the brake line. So you want to just take it and slide it up out of the way, balancing it on the axle so it's out of the way. So here are the two brake pads. Mine are pretty worn. Just pull them out. I caught mine pretty much at the right time. You don't really want to let your brake pads go that far. One thing you want to take a look at when you take these brake pads off is to make sure that there is even wear all the way around or close to it. So this brake pad is a little thicker on this side than it is on this side. That means that the, the caliper wasn't applying an even amount of pressure. One thing you also want to check is the function of the slide pins. These pins should move freely. My bottom one's sticking a little bit. So you want them to move like this. You don't want them to move like this or slower. I'm applying a reasonable amount of force on these to get them to move. I'll be checking that out later. If you're replacing your rotors as well, you'll need to remove this bracket. So the bracket is held on by a bolt here and a bolt here. They're both 15 millimeters. Like the caliper slide pin bolts, they are notorious for rusting and stripping. Uh, you might want to apply a little bit of penetrating oil on these to help move them along. I'd also advise using a, long, a breaker bar or some kind of long extension on your ratchet or box end wrench when trying to remove these because they're on pretty tight. In addition, like with the slide pin bolts, you want to use a six-sided socket or box end wrench to open these up, otherwise you could, you could potentially strip them if they're rusty. See some of the rust that was on this bolt? That's what I'm talking about. Once you've got the last bolt out, just remove the bracket. If this rotor has never been off before, you might have one of those little star washer things that come from the factory. You can just take that and just with a screwdriver and just rip it off and deform it. You don't really need it. It's only there for when they're building the car at the factory. They just put the rotor on, zip that thing on, and they don't have to worry about it falling off during the assembly process. Once the car's in the field, you don't have to worry about that because the tire with the lug nuts will hold the rotor in place. If you live in the rust belt or places where there's lots of we have salt in the roads or things like that. It may be difficult to remove this. It may have rusted itself to the plate on the axle that these lug nuts are going through. It's also very common for them to rust around this ring right here. 
If that happens, you can try with the palm of your hand hitting the rotor at 12, 6, 3, and 9 a couple times around until it gives way. If it still won't give way, you take a nice large hammer and stick it in between here. And then you hit the, the other side of that hammer, in this case it's a sledge, you hit the other side of it with another hammer. You don't want to just whack in here because chances are you'll hit the lugs and you'll you'll damage the threads and that'll just make your day even worse because replacing these is not as easy as it may sound so just use this as a plate to hit onto and just hit it like that in a couple different spots so now just remove the rotor now that you got everything off you want to take a look at your tone ring if you've got ABS make sure that it's on there solid take a look at the sensor over here on this side and clean it off it's magnetic, it's a Hall Effect sensor, so a lot of times metallic brake dust will stick to it. It doesn't mean that it's working any worse, it's just better to have this clean. So just hit it with a couple of shots of brake clean and you should be fine. In addition, look for any oil leaks around in here. If you have an oil leak in there, that means your axle seal is leaking and uh, you should replace it. Next we need to compress the caliper piston. Before we do, we want to remove some fluid from the master cylinder so that it doesn't overflow as the fluid gets pushed back up. So what I like to do is before even opening the cap, just wipe it down. This ensures that when you open the cap, you don't allow contaminants into the fluid. So you open the cap up, put it aside, get a turkey baster. I prefer the uh, clear plastic kind. Uh, so you can see how much you're sucking up and just suck up as much fluid as you can making sure not to get any of the fluid on your paint dot three fluid which is what this car takes is caustic to paint it will it will eat through it so if you value your paint make sure you don't drip any so as you can see my fluid looks kind of dark that's normal for dot three fluid Dot 3 fluid will absorb moisture in the air, and when it does so, it gets darker. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's dirty, it just means that it's got some moisture in it. A little bit of moisture is not a problem, but a lot of moisture can cause a spongy break and can cause other braking issues, which is why you should change your brake fluid every two years or so. Now wipe up any fluid that you may have dripped, and place the cap on top. Do not screw it on. You don't want to cause a seal. You want to allow uh, the air that's in the master cylinder to come out as you compress the caliper, which will push the fluid back up through the master cylinder. Now we have to compress the piston. Now unlike the front brake calipers, these don't just compress by squeezing them. This confused me to no end the first time I encountered a brake caliper like this back in the early 90s. On a normal, to me, caliper, you take a large C-clamp and just compress this piston back into its bore. However, this caliper is designed where the parking brake is built in to the caliper. So you actually have to twist the piston back into its bore. So there are a couple different tools you can use to do this. You can buy a tool like this, I'm not really sure what it's called, it's like a caliper key or a uh, caliper cube depending on who you ask. Anyway, it's got different prongs on it to fit in the little slots here and here on different brake calipers. Some are in the form of an X, some are, you know, different patterns range. You seat the caliper key in, you apply pressure inward, and you rotate clockwise at the same time. This will work, in my opinion, in a pinch. This tool is not exactly idiot proof. It's very easy to get off center and have it slip out and you can strip these little notches if you look closely somebody already has a little bit at least once before you can see the grooves on the right side right about here looks like a little orange dot another solution is to rent a disc brake caliper tool set from your local auto parts store this one's part number 27111 it's made by OEM in it you've got different keys for different caliper types in our case we'll be using the one that's marked H014. There's another one in the kit that's marked H015, but the studs on it are slightly taller, and that makes it so it doesn't seat properly in the notches. You use the tool by inserting the backing plate on it like this. You place the key that you're going to use onto the little notches, then you seat the whole thing in the caliper, making sure that the tabs on the key line up with the notches in the piston. 
Then you rotate this inner nut counterclockwise to move this whole unit this way, which puts pressure on the piston. Then you take the lever and you rotate it clockwise, going slow at first to make sure that the piston is sliding within the boot here. You don't want the boot to start twisting. If it does, take a little bit of uh, spray silicone lubricant and spray it in here a little bit just so the uh, dust boot has something to slide with. So you keep rotating clockwise and every once in a while you need to re-tighten by turning this nut counterclockwise and you just keep turning. The benefit of this tool is that it applies the pressure on the piston and also gives you good leverage with this arm to rotate the piston. So once it bottoms out, you want to end with these notches being vertical. That's so the notches line up with the little tab that's on the brake pad. If the notches don't line up with that tab, then the pad won't seat properly and you'll have uneven wear and possible brake problems. Now once you get it seated like this all the way down, this might be fairly tight. So just take a wrench and loosen it clockwise so that you can remove the tool. Now it's a good idea before, during, and after you are doing this to inspect this dust boot and make sure that it's collapsing properly on itself. You don't want the dust boot folded over like this because then it'll pinch once you put the pad on. So you want to make sure that it's seated inside itself like that. If your dust boot is ripped or torn, go to your local auto parts store and pick up a caliper rebuild kit. These boots don't hold fluid in, they prevent dust from getting in and ultimately contaminating the system, which can cause the piston to seize in the bore, which can cause your brake caliper to seize, obviously, and therefore your brakes to fail. It's important that these boots are in good condition. So say, for example, once it bottoms out with the tool, the notches are not vertical. The piston will spin even when it's fully bottomed out and fully seated. You can take your caliper key, for example, and rotate it until you're at where you need to be. If you don't have one of those keys, you can just use the key that came with the kit, taking off the plate here, and just rotate it where you need to be. Now once you've got the piston seated, just tuck the caliper away. Okay, before putting the rotor on, what I like to do is I like to put a light coat of anti-seize around this little ring right here. It's very common for rotors to rust to the hub in this spot. Not just on this vehicle, but pretty much most vehicles have this problem. Putting anti-seize around this area will help prevent the rotor from rusting and make it easier for you to remove it later when and if you ever have to, without having to bang on the rotor or anything like that and possibly damage it. So it doesn't take a lot. Just give it a good ring like that. Next you install the rotor. If you're reusing your rotors, take a caliper and measure the thickness of the rotor right in here. Around the ring of the rotor, they'll be stamped a minimum thickness. In this case, I don't know if you can see it, but there's some writing. Right here it says min THK thickness 12.8 millimeters. According to the service manual, the stock rotors also have a minimum thickness of 12.8 millimeters. So before you install your new rotor, especially if it's new, you need to clean off the outer surface because there's going to be a coating on there that helps prevent rust in the factory. And so you need to remove that before getting it onto your vehicle. If you're reusing your rotor, you should clean it as well to get your fingerprints off of it. Just the shiny part. And then wipe it down. These rotors are slotted. They're made by a company called Power Slot. The part number for the right side is 126.61042, S is in Sam, R is in Rob. The left side part number is the same number except the last letter is L as in lamp. So with slotted rotors, they are directional. Each rotor goes on a specific side. So in this case, this is the right rotor. So just slide it on like that. You don't have to go slotted. Uh, I have slotted on the front of this car and I like them. They work pretty well. The only thing I don't like about them is they're a little bit noisy. Not in a squeal, but more of a, a groan as you hit the brakes. That's the brake pads 
hitting these grooves, but it stops really well, so I'm not I'm not complaining. I'm not one of those guys who's all about speed, but stopping, yeah, that's usually an important thing. Anyway, so pick whatever rotor you want. There are ones that, that can be in the hundreds of dollars, and there's some that can be like as, as little as like $10. But in my opinion, you tend to get what you pay for as far as rotors go. Smooth rotors versus slotted, you can argue that all day. Go with whatever you feel like getting. So once you have the rotor on, what I like to do is I like to put one of the lug nuts on to hold the rotor in place as I'm working with the caliper. Next, you want to turn your attention to the caliper mounting bracket and specifically the slide pins. So what you want to do is you want to take them off just by pulling slightly, trying, making sure not to break this boot. If your boots are damaged, you want to replace them because they prevent water from getting in here and rusting these shut. These things need to move freely. Take the slide pin out and then you take the boot off by just pulling up on it slightly and sliding it all the way off. Then you take a towel, just wipe it off wipe it down. So now you want to inspect it. Look for any uneven wear, any grooving, any pitting, any rust. If you see any of those things, this is garbage. You need to go replace this. It's only about 15 or 20 bucks, something like that, at your local auto parts store for a replacement kit that I think covers both sides. So if these don't slide well, your brakes don't work well. So these pins are almost as important as your brake pads themselves. Next, you want to clean out the bore where your slide pin goes in. Roll up a paper towel and slide it in there or some Q-tips, uh, some definitely some brake cleaner and just shoot it in there and clean it out and uh, look inside and look for any pitting, rusting or things like that. If there's any rust, you might get away with putting a piece of emery cloth on the end of a drill bit and spinning it in there, basically a poor man's flapper wheel and smoothing out the rust that may be in there. Otherwise, you should replace this mounting bracket. Next you want to take a little bit of brake caliper grease and coat the slide pin and the bore and the bushing and stuff. You don't want to use normal chassis grease or uh, things like that because those types of greases have a tendency to break down rubber. You don't want this rubber bushing breaking down and falling apart. The other added benefit of brake caliper grease is that it can withstand high temperatures that brake systems tend to incur. A lot of greases, especially chassis grease or multi-purpose grease, will liquefy when they get very hot. Brake caliper grease does not do that. So you want to take a little bit of brake caliper grease and stick it in the bore and lastly put some on the slide pin. You don't need a whole ton, you just need enough to coat. Now you take your rubber boot, you have two different ends on it, you slide the boot on, spin it around a little bit to make sure that it's seated in that groove, take the caliper mounting bracket, stick the slide pin in and then you want to put the rubber boot over top of this lip. And the way I do that is just push on it and give it a good spin to make sure it's seated. So once you've done this side, then you just do the same thing on the other. Next, you wanna put some brake caliper grease on the spots that the brake pads slide on. As you can see, this is a good wear spot, so you wanna make sure that this is nice and lubed and not rusty. If there's rust on here, you wanna take some uh, emery cloth and clean it off, otherwise your brake pads won't slide properly. Just put a little bit on, doesn't take a lot. Coat this flat part as well as this ledge right here and here. Basically anywhere that the brake pad slides upon. If you see any grooves or pitting or any kind of other marks like that, you need to replace this mounting bracket. Any type of grooves or pitting will prevent the brake pad from moving properly and you'll have a seized brake caliper, which is no fun. Make sure to clean up any excess that got in the gap in the middle so that it doesn't get onto your rotor when you install it. If you get any grease on the rotor, you need to clean it off with some brake cleaner and make sure you don't get it on your brake pads. Next, you want to install the mounting bracket. Before you do, you want to take a little bit of anti-seize and just put it on the tip of the bolt. That's it, that's all you need. These things have a tendency to rust. Anti-seize will help prevent that. So when you try to remove these later, you don't strip them out or break the bolt. Now you take your bracket, Slide it in place, slide the bolt through the back, and put anti-seize on the other bolt, slide it through the back, line it up, and again, start it by hand. Now you take your 15 millimeter socket and run them down. Next you want to torque these bolts down to between 65 and 87 foot-pounds. I like to take those torque specs and split them in half, and so that makes it 76 foot-pounds. Now it's time to install the brake pads. Now if you're installing new rotors, it's always a good idea to install new brake pads to go with it. 
because your old brake pads are going to be grooved and carved to fit your old rotor, not your new rotor. So these brake pads come with tangs on the top and the bottom that slide in here. There's also little metal brackets that come with the brake pads that actually are what slide against the caliper mounting bracket. So when I got these, they didn't quite fit right because this metal tab right here was down too far. So what I did was I just took it and I bent it up a little bit because that metal tab is what holds it against the pad. So the way you install the clips is you take the pad and the clip, put them together like this, and then rotate upwards. You put similar clips on all four tabs on both brake pads. So to install the brake pad, you put the brake pad in the slot, then take a screwdriver, press down on the top clip, and slide it into place. Then you do the same thing on the other side. Next you have to install this metal clip in the top of the caliper. This came with my brake pad set, but you can pick these up at the, your local auto parts store. This is for, used to allow these springs here to slide against this smooth metal rather than the rough cast iron. To install it, there's a smooth end and there's an end with a little bump or clip, whatever you want to call it. So you take the smooth end, you insert it in here like this, pressing down so that the smooth end comes in here. That'll allow you to push the clip down and slide it forward. Then you press down further and push and it'll slide into place. So you ultimately want it to be on there like that. So the clip hooks onto this little ledge right here, the smooth part is smooth right there. So like with any moving parts in a brake system, you want to apply a little bit of brake caliper grease to the smooth part to allow the metal springs on the back of the brake pads to slide easier. Next you double check that the flat part of the slide pins is facing inward because they need to interface with this flat part right here on the caliper on both sides. Right there and right there. So now you take your caliper and slide it over the brake pads, if you need to, push the slide pins inward to make clearance. Take a little bit of anti-seize, put it on the tip of the bolt, slide it into place, and start it by hand. Making sure that the flat part of the slide pin is coming in contact with the flat part on the caliper. Now press down on the caliper, making sure that the flat part again is coming in contact with the flat part on the caliper. Thread the bolt in by hand with a little bit of anti-seize on the tip. Next you torque the slide pin bolts here and here to between 23 and 25 foot-pounds. So cut that in half 24. You might have some trouble getting a torque wrench in here to get this bolt right here because of the parking brake spring. So 23 to 25 foot-pounds is not that much. You can take an open-end wrench or a box wrench preferably and tighten this down by hand. Just snug it down real good. Next you install the parking brake, just slide it into the hole. Next you take the C-clip and slide it into the groove, sorry for blocking the light. Make sure it snaps into place and that you can rotate it freely to make sure it's fully seated. Next you get a pair of pliers, pull out on the end of the parking brake and slide it into the groove. So as you can see the caliper is very loose right now. This is what it's supposed to do when, you're when it's floating on these slide pins. But right now it's very loose because the piston is retracted all the way. So you need to pump the brake pedal multiple times in order to expand the piston and close the gap between it and the brake pads. Then make sure to top off the master cylinder. Now would also be a perfect time to bleed or flush your brakes. I have a video about how to do that by yourself with a simple hand vacuum pump. You could do all four wheels within a half hour. It's something you should do every couple of years anyway because brake fluid absorbs water which makes it lose its efficiency and gives you a spongy pedal. You always want to replace brake pads in pairs so once you've done this side you want to definitely do the other side. Same with rotors. If you replace um, a rotor you should replace the other side as well. This is primarily to, to maintain the amount of wear so when you inspect this one and see that it's low you know the other side is probably the same. So that's pretty much it for this brake caliper. During your test drive you want to take it easy to allow the brakes a time to break in and get used to the new rotor. You don't want to make any quick or sudden stops. You want to make gradual slow stops, especially at the very beginning. Anyway, so I hope this video helped you out. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them in the comments section below. If you like this video, please click the thumbs up button. If you want to see more videos like this one, please subscribe.